Hi everyone. Today I'm going to be going over how to calculate um, the position of a point on your part that you're looking at. So this is really going to be a tutorial on how to use the point tool within the Baumer Verisen software. Um, so let's get started. So the first thing you're going to do is add a part location on contours tool. Uh, so we're going to just drag this tool over the part we're looking at. And you can see this pattern is a little grainy. And you can watch my other video on how to set this tool up with all the settings and things like that. But I'll just breeze through here quickly. So I'm going to say OK. So main thing is right now we have a part and we don't know which way it's oriented coming down a conveyor belt. And we want to know where this, the position of this tab um, within the image so that, for example, a picker robot can pick it up from that tab. Um, so we need to know the X and Y coordinates of this tab. So the first thing, like I said, is to, to create a part location on contours tool to locate this part. And you can see as we rotate through the images, it's finding the part and it's finding the orientation. And that's why these arrows are rotating as well. So uh, the second and last tool that you're going to need here is under the geometry tab. You're going to go down to the second to the last one, which is a point position tool. Double click on that. Whoops. And then you're just going to drag it over to the actual tab that you want to locate. Um, right now it's red because of these position um, upper and lower bounds. We're just going to max and min those out because it doesn't really matter I'm not trying to find for this example I'm not trying to find the actual um, like pass or fail if it's outside a certain area right now I'm just trying to output X and Y coordinates for um, this tab so if we max and min those out it's going to be green we say OK and now when we rotate through the image, you can see how that point tool is moving around, always staying on that black tab. And that's because it's tracking off of this original part location on contours tool. And it's just uh, moving around with it based on the orientation of the part and its location. Um, one important thing I wanted to show you here is this track position on, this has to be set to part location on contours. And that's the part location tool that we first set up. It automatically does this. But if for whatever reason you created this tool first, um, it's going to ask you if you want to track it off of that, that one. And you can manually do it there. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you was the um, calculation method. And this is for the X and Y um, positions here. Right now, it's absolute position in image. So uh, your top left corner is going to be 0, 0, um, coordinate 0, 0 and um, it's going to be figuring out where, where this uh, point is in the image based off of x and y coordinates in pixels. So, you know, here we have 335 pixels in the x direction. So we go 335 pixels over. Then the y direction, it's giving us 355, which means we're going down 355. You can see when we rotate this image, um, we're getting the x direction is 321, which means we're going 321 over. And the y direction, we're only going down 180. So that makes sense. Um, and that's absolute position in range. If you wanted to um, make it relative to reference, that's where we do that. And now it's just going to give you the difference between um, your original trained point. So if we go back to the original trained one, which was this one. Um, that should, let's teach it actually. Teach it off of that. That should give you zero, zero. So that's your trained part. And then all these other tools are actually going to be trained off. All these other positions are going to be trained off of that. So this is 14 pixels, negative 14 pixels in the x direction, negative 175 pixels in the y direction from your trained part or point. 
yeah, so um, that's just up to you. I like to leave it in absolute position in, in image. Like I said, we max amend these out so we don't fail anything. Now, the other thing you have to do is once you have that um, and you're picking up um, your point there, you're going to go to configure interfaces, output process interfaces, and here you can select the tool that we were just using, which is the point position one, and then you can select the value that you want outputted. So, uh, for example, let's say rotation, um, and that's going to give you zero degrees from trained, which makes sense because this is the image we trained it off of. This should be about 180. Yep, uh, negative 180. Same thing. And this should be uh, 90, or, yeah, negative 90 here. So you can see how these values are changing based on where that point is um, relative to the trained image that it was originally trained off of. So now we want x and y coordinates as well. So we're going to add in same tool, point position. But instead of rotation, we're going to go to position x. And we're going to add in another one, same tool, but position y. And these are going to give you the x and y coordinates of this point. Um, and this separator, this is what separates your values. So at first, I just use dot, dot, dot. You can use comma, semicolon, whatever, to separate these values. So you can see 0 degrees, 335 pixels, 355 pixels. So this is angle, x coordinate, y coordinate. And as you rotate through the images, you can see how those numbers change. That's really all there is to it, and that's how you output um, your x and y coordinates for um, for a robot to be able to locate this tab.